Welcome to the program today. This is Pastor Siva Mudley. And I'm Catherine Mudley. Wow, we're just so excited as we are talking about the Holy Spirit. I know you are blessed by all the stuff that you are learning. And it is amazing. I know that many of you would have by now had encounters with the Holy Spirit. As you said, Holy Spirit, who are you? I want to know you. Come into my room. Good night, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. As you begin to speak to him, he would have been speaking back to you and you would have had some powerful, powerful encounters. Now, encounters is what we're talking about today on the program. Yes. And uh, just to get our bearing again, we were speaking about the Holy Spirit. Number one, he teaches us. And we went to John 14, 26, that says, The counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sent in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all things I've said. So the Holy Spirit teaches us all things, but he also reminds us of things. Isn't that awesome? And when I wrote my exams, and often when I would write exams, I would say, Holy Spirit, bring to remembrance whatever I've studied. Help me to remember it, and, and it'll come back. Even when I, I'm a little bit stressed out in the exam, and I say, Holy Spirit, I, take a, I, I, I would stop a minute. Mm -hmm. I say, Holy Spirit, please tell me what did I study? And he will fill my mind with it. Because that's what he does. He's yes. the spirit of remembrance. And the Bible says he teaches us all things. Yes. Which means the Holy Spirit teaches you not just from the Bible. He teaches you from everything. Because God made all things. How many of you know that God made science? Yes. God made the universe. I mean, God made atoms. So who would know better about atoms than the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. And who's the greatest teacher? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. He's the professor of professors. Amen. <laughs> yes. And next we, we spoke about he testifies of Christ. And this is one of the primary things the Holy Spirit does. You cannot spend time with the Holy Spirit and not know Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit, his, his primary desire is to teach you the word to teach you about Jesus, to teach you about the kingdom of God. So he's the spirit of truth that comes from the Father, and he'll testify about Jesus, John 15, 26. Then we said that he convicts, John 16, 8. And I want to pick up from here. When he comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world. Convict the world. In other, and from the Amplified says, will expose the guilt of the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. So, when the Holy Spirit is present in our lives, when the Holy Spirit is present in our community, in our church, then there is conviction of sin. If the Holy Spirit is there, it is very hard for people to continue in sin. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, He convicts us. Now, we can, we can rebel against God and, and we can try to you know, ignore Him, but he'll keep convicting us. So whenever you see conviction, and you know, sometimes uh, when I was a young pastor, I would see the same person come to the altar all the time. And, and, and some of my workers said, but you know, like every Sunday, this guy is getting convicted and coming, giving his life to Jesus again or, or repenting for something. And I said, leave him. Mm. Every time God is convicting him, that means God is busy working on him. There'll come a moment when he, he'll understand the word. There'll come a moment when he'll understand God's grace. And he'll understand that now God has done it for him. But as long as someone is getting convicted, that is the work of the Holy Spirit on that person's life. And, and, you know, and it says he convicts the world. So who better to convict the world than the Holy Spirit? Wow. You know? Often I've tried to convince people that they should follow Jesus. I've tried to speak to the world. And I know many of you out there that was watching this program, you've tried to get people to come to Jesus. You tried to get them convicted when you saw someone, maybe somebody close to you, a colleague, maybe a son or a daughter. You saw them living in sin and you, and you wanted to get them convicted and you spoke to them, but they didn't listen. They still ignored what you said. That's because conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit. We should still speak to people, but we need to ask the Holy Spirit to convict someone. 
We need to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I, I bring my son before you, or I bring my daughter before you, or I bring my husband before you, or my wife before you, I bring so-and-so person before you. Holy Spirit, I am praying for them right now to be saved. I am praying for them to be convicted of sin, to repent, or maybe it's a backslidden Christian. I'm praying for them to repent and come back to the cross. And the one that does the conviction is the Holy Spirit. Many years ago, I was in a, a crusade or you know, a, tent, a, a tent meeting, and there was this mighty man of God who used to be a rock, a rock singer and a drummer of a very famous rock band, and he got saved. So he came to Durban, to a place called King's Park in Durban, a big stadium, and he started to minister in the stadium. He started to sing the, uh, some music, and, and while he was singing, the Holy Spirit turned up. Now, in that stadium, there were many, many people and many Satanists that did not know Jesus. The Satanists actually took one entire uh, pavilion. They occupied the whole thing. Everybody dressed in black. And you can see, hey, these guys are not normal Christian folk. So they sat on the, on the pavilion. The minister sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he stopped singing, and he made an altar call. And the entire pavilion, hundreds of them, hundreds of them, came to the altar to give their life to Jesus. Now, what was amazing, I'm sitting there, young Christian, I'm saying, hold on, um, he hasn't preached any message yet. He hasn't preached the word. But how are these people coming to Jesus when the preacher hasn't preached as yet. You see, <laughs> later on I discovered that we can be the best preachers in the world, but the one that brings in the lost, the ones that get them saved, the one that gets them saved, he is the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit was present as, as this mighty man of God was singing and, and worshiping God, the Holy Spirit convicted this group of people and they came to the cross. So in church, the more of the Holy Spirit we allow, the greater the conviction in our yes, church. The more the, souls are going to be saved. More souls. And the greater, and it says here, listen, convicts them of sin and righteousness, which means more people are going to start living right for God in the church. Wow. You know, sometimes as, as preachers, we want to uh, hammer people and <laughs> do everything we can to put them on the right path because we're so passionate. But the one that should be bringing people back to live a righteous life, that is the Holy Spirit. He convicts us of sin, righteousness, and the coming judgment, which is John 16, 8. Now, Catherine, the next thing that we're going to learn about the Holy Spirit is that he leads. And I'm going to read a scripture, and I want you to explain to us what does it mean that the Holy Spirit leads us. Romans 8, 14. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. It's interesting, the scripture doesn't say child of God. It says sons of God. You see, a child is someone who is still sheep. So being led by the Holy Spirit is a maturity thing. Now, if you are a a, a, a child of God, if, you're a, if you have sheep mentality, you're going to be led by a pastor. You're going to be led by a shepherd. And sheep are led by shepherds. Well, what's the difference between a son and a sheep? You know, sheep only have one vision in life. All sheep want to do is get green pasture, get good food, good uh, rest, get uh, water. You know, that's all sheep think about. Where the grass is green, that's where I'm going to. So sheep need a shepherd to lead them. The shepherd pulls them in the right direction, pushes them in the right direction, disciplines them, does all that, because sheep are led by a shepherd. But yeah, it says, listen, when you have grown up from a child into a son, when you have matured, that's why Romans 8 says, creation waits for the manifestation of the sons. sons. When you have grown up and become a son, you are now ready to be led by the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean, hey, that you're going to rebel against your shepherd. It means that a son is in a, is in a higher level of maturity and a son is now being led all the time 
by the Holy Spirit. So those who are led by the Holy Spirit have matured and become sons. I know you out there as you're listening to me, you saying, Pastor, I am a son or I'm going to be a son. Amen. Now, if you're a male or a female, listen, uh, when the Bible talks about man, the Bible talks about sons, it's referring to sons and daughters. It's, it's not referring to, to one gender only. It's referring to both genders. Yes. Now, when we say you're being, uh, uh, you're being a son of God, it's talking to both male and female. And it says, listen, there's a level of maturity where we are now led by the Holy Spirit. When we led, we have matured. So Catherine, how does the Holy Spirit lead you? Well, the first thing I actually want to just speak about is picking up what you just said about being a son of God. Uh -huh. The person who's our example is Jesus right. because he is the son of God. Ah, yes. So we can see how he was being led by the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we can see in his life, he right. prayed. Right. We read about him praying early in the morning. Uh, right. There's other men in the Bible, men and women who prayed and so they were led. They got instruction from God. Mm -hmm. uh, to be led by God, I need to fast. Mm -hmm. So that means that I need to deny myself mm -hmm. so that I can hear God's voice. Right. So that, you know, there's a saying that we, uh, a lot of preachers say that we, we pick up our cross or they say that I, I choose to die to myself daily. Mm -hmm. What that means is I'm surrendering my will right. because I want God's will. Ah, is it, so that's what fasting is all about. Yes. So absolutely. fasting is when you say, hey, no, not my way, his way. You're more of Jesus, less of me. Amen. So when you start to do that, then you, it's easy to be led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because your flesh is not leading you anymore mm -hmm. and you're growing in maturity. So you're saying sons are people that have, that have crucified the flesh. Yes. They've crucified the flesh and they've made a decision to live for Jesus. Wow. That is powerful. That is powerful. Go on. And, you know, to be led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. Right. Right. So he speaks in different ways. Uh -huh. He speaks through the word of God. Right. He gives us dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. and he also gives us what we call the check in our spirit. Uh, right. So um, a lot of people don't ignore it or they think, you know, some people say it's my sixth sense. But right. as Christians, we actually learn that the Holy Spirit ministers to our spirit. So that check, is, is that like something that says, yes, that's it. Go for it. Yeah. Let's say Sometimes. you, let's let, let just say, sorry. So let's just say you, you're going to buy a, a vehicle, right? And you're saying, yes. God, is this the vehicle you want me to have? And I've been trusting you and praying for it. And then there'll be like a check. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Is that what you say? Sometimes there's like a peace that you and I should do this. Right. Uh, but sometimes at the same time, there's an uneasiness. Right. So, so if I get an uneasiness, what does that mean? Let's say I'm praying. I'm saying, God, I want to relocate to a new city. And, and this is what happens. Relocate to a new city, but everything falls in place. Everything falls in place. The accommodation is there. The promotion is there. There's a nice church not very far from where I'm going to stay. Mm. Uh, somebody blesses me with transportation and relocation costs. All these things happen. It's so wonderful. But, but, there is this uneasiness in my spirit. What should I do? What does that mean? Well, the first thing is that God doesn't speak in confusion. Ah. He won't say yes in some ways and say no in other ways. Right. right. So, so if I'm relocating then, should I then first go into a time of fasting and Absolutely. praying to hear from God? No matter how good the offer, no matter how things fall in place, I have to hear from God. So if I hear from God uh, and he says go I'm, I'm going to be fine. But if I don't hear from God, then even don't if move. don't move, Always, even if others, yeah. even if others say it's fine. So, and, and the thing that's going to guide me is this, checking, your spirit. checking my spirit. Yeah. So uneasiness means don't do it. Wait. Yes. Have you got that? And uneasiness in your spirit is where the Holy Spirit says, wait, wait. wait. Sometimes, you know, like salesmen say, man, this, this offer is too good to last. You know, you got to get it right now. Take it right now. Yes. Otherwise, it's gone. In the next 30 seconds, you got to say yes to it. Otherwise, you're going to lose the special bonus. 
So people, uh, uh, the same way, yeah. when they see opportunities come, they just want to grab the opportunity. But we should first, if it's a major decision, if it's a major decision, it should always be done in fasting and prayer. Because if it is something from God, if it is a promotion from God, God has given it to you and no devil can steal it from you. No devil can steal it from you. That is from God. Amen. But if it's not from God, the devil will try and push it on you. And sometimes things that look so good are not necessarily God. Sometimes you have um, a fakes. Right. You know, sometimes you have like distractions right. or something that appears to be uh, genuine. The, genuine, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like false options. Uh -huh. So sometimes that happens first before God actually brings, like for example, in relationships. Right. A lot of people, they say that, you know, this person came first and they look like the perfect one. But right. then they that's actually, if, that's they if, weren't the perfect one. God had somebody else for them. Well. That's yeah. if you had like a prophecy mm -hmm. and the prophecy said, hey, your partner's coming to your life. Yeah. And maybe you, you wrote down 10 points about who you want to marry. You sowed a seed and then you got a word uh, your partner is coming and then someone just turns up immediately after that and we assume this is the one yes. because the prophecy came and then he or she came. So you're saying even if something happens it falls in sequence like that, there must be a confirmation in yes. your spirit. God will make it known to you. Yeah. And you know, there's also, uh, especially in major decisions, right. uh, uh, this includes, you know, if you're finding the partner, uh, you can actually ask God to confirm. And I know in your life, you actually shared about this uh, as well, mm -hmm. where God sent multiple people and mm -hmm. there was people having dreams, people you never mm -hmm. even met as yet. And God made a confirmation. He made it very clear to you mm -hmm. that this is his decision. This is his will. You know, the Bible says that God does nothing without telling his prophets. That means God will not do major stuff in your life without actually telling you. You know, and, and usually he tells you before he does it. He tells you before he does it, hey, there's a promotion coming, this is coming, that's coming. But I've seen so many people, when they get a word, they just start running and they still don't listen to the Holy Spirit. You know, when you get a word from God, more than ever, you should go into fasting. God I got the word. Now, I need to make sure the next step that the devil doesn't mess up my, the plans that you have. I, it's my responsibility to test everything. It's my responsibility to see if this person is the one that God has for me. It's my responsibility to see if this business opportunity is from God. Even though it seems so good, it seems so unreal, it is so perfect. I still need a word from God before I step forward. This is something that we as believers need to do. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit and we need uh, to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. He needs to minister to us. I will never forget this. I was, I was offered airtime, television network in a certain country. And the offer was so amazing. It seemed like it was such a great blessing. It seemed to such a great blessing. Because yeah, they would put me on prime time. My program would be viewed by millions. And of course, I wasn't in this country. It's the first time I'd be on national television in this country. I was quite excited. It, they were gonna put me on for free. I said, wow, what an offer, what a deal. So I said, yes, let's go for it. It seemed good, it seemed godly. I was gonna meet the station owner and he was flying in and we would conclude the deal so as I'm driving on the, on, on the highway to get to the airport to meet the owner of this network, the Holy Spirit said to me, what are you doing? I never told you to get onto this network. I said, uh, 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 it seems like such a good deal. He said, uh, uh I never told you to get onto this network. They want to use your program to prostitute the gospel and prostitute the, the anointing to make money. This is not a godly network. And I don't want you to take the glory onto that network. And immediately I pulled off on the side of the road. I repented to God. I canceled the meeting. I made a U-turn and went back home. You see, sometimes, beloved, things look so good, but it must be God. It must be God. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to lead us. So you spoke about 
the uh, uh, and there's also obviously there's a still small voice of the Holy Spirit that speaks. Yes. And for for the voice of the Holy Spirit, it takes like experience. You know, if you keep on listening to mm-hmm. the way somebody speaks. Right. So if somebody and, they, and their voice. Yeah, their voice. So if, for example, if somebody calls me and I speak, by the second line, they'll know if it's me speaking. Right. Because they're always listening to my they're voice. Acquainted with you. They know how I speak. Right. So you can tell that by spending time with the Holy Spirit, ah. by reading and studying the Word of God. Right. So if there's a voice that says, uh, you're not going to make it you'll know that's not God because God never said that in his word. So spend time in God's word. You know, you'll right. be able to pick up if that's a counterfeit voice or if that's the Holy Spirit speaking. Right. There's this refinement that comes yes. as you mature with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the next thing the Holy Spirit does is he reveals truth. John sixteen thirteen says, when he, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you unto all truth. He will tell you what is yet to come. The Holy Spirit is a prophetic voice that's leading us to truth and telling us what is going to come. And he leads us to all truth. So in a situation where you're not sure uh, what's going on, in a situation where you don't know uh, what's true or what's not true, the Holy Spirit turns up and he says, "Uh -uh, let me separate the truth from the false. Let me show you what's me and what's not me. And so sometimes, if you have this uneasiness in your spirit about something, uh, the Holy Spirit is revealing some truth to you. If you're going to buy something and and the Holy Spirit says, "Uh uh-uh, or maybe you're planning to go somewhere, and all of a sudden, something stops you. It's like a, stop, you can't go there. That's how the Holy Spirit works as well. You know, it's a, the Holy Spirit doesn't force you, but he stops you. I, I, it's, a, it's a bit of a difficult thing to, to yeah. explain. It's, it's, it's like, I know I shouldn't be doing this. Right. Yeah, there's, there's this uneasiness, there's this forbidding, like, right. I shouldn't do this. Right. Yeah. Excellent. There's that forbidding inside. Yes. So he reveals truth, and that's the next thing he does. Then the Holy Spirit strengthens us and encourages us. Maybe right now you're going through something where uh, you need some sort of encouragement, uh, somebody to lift you up. This is what the Holy Spirit loves to do. Acts 9.31 And the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. So who strengthened the church? Who encouraged the church? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. And the Bible says it grew in numbers. All of them living in the fear of the Lord. So this is in Judea, Galilee, Samaria. So the one who strengthens the church is the Holy Spirit. The one that encourages us, even when we think we can't make it. Even when we say we, we, we don't know how to do it. Even when we say, oh, I, I, I just need someone to tell me everything's going to be okay. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit says, hey, it's going to be okay. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Everything's going to be fine. The work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, sometimes I go into a meeting or I go into a conference and I'm not sure what's going to happen or I'm not sure what I, you know, how I'm going to answer questions or, or, or maybe I'm in a meeting. I don't know if I'm going to give the right answer or not. And I'm a bit worried. And I'm saying, God, you know what? What am I going to do? What am I going to say? And he says, hold on. I got this. I got this. He starts to speak through me. There's this boldness that comes out. And he starts to encourage me. You can do it. You can make it. You can do it. You can make it. And that is what the Holy Spirit does. Now, the truth is, all of us need somebody like this to encourage us. Absolutely. Because we go through situations every day where we don't know which way to turn. You know, we sometimes we get such, so much of bad news, bad press, bad uh, information, mm-hmm. and, and we don't know, well, what am I going to do? This is where you need to surrender and allow the Holy Spirit to encourage you. The Holy Spirit is not a spirit of fear. He does not put fear in you. The Holy Spirit says, you can do it. Amen. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to make it. You're going to get to the other side. That is how the Holy Spirit strengthens us and encourages us. So whenever the storms of life hit, 
and the Holy Spirit is there, he will lift you up. He will encourage you. He will build you up. He will not let you perish. Mm. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why people who walk and know the Holy Spirit are always bold. They're always able to get up again. No matter what the world throws at them, mm. no matter what the devil throws at them, they're able to get up and be stronger. And this is why we need the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's the other comforter. He's the comforter. Yes. Amen. <laughs> he comforts us in whatever we go through. Amen. Amen. He comforts us all the time. Let's pray quickly. Come, join hands. Let's pray. I want you to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit right now. Stretch your hands towards the screen. We're going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now. Every person that's listening to my voice, they're going to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit now in the name of Jesus. Father, fill them with your precious spirit right now. Signs, wonders, miracles taking place. Let people be drunk in the supernatural. I command a spiritual eyes to be opened, spiritual ears to be opened. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Those that are discouraged right now, they will be encouraged by the Holy Ghost. In yes. Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen, amen. amen. We will see you again on this program. Keep watching. We will be back next week, and we're going to give you some, wow, you're going to be back on the show with me, yeah. and we're going to be discussing some very, very powerful stuff. So don't miss your miracle moment. From Pastor Siva. And from Catherine Woodley. Goodbye, and God bless you.